couple guys that are a surprise. You know, guys that say, well, I didn't know he could do that. And that's, you know, that's what, that, that's what our job is, is to find a way to find a couple guys and all these scouts show up and they say, well, I, we didn't know he could do that. And so uh, you know, you're, you're excited for all of them. You're excited for the parents, the girlfriends, the, the brothers and sisters, everybody, because you know they can, they can change people's lives if it, if it turns out well for them. So. So what do you think? I mean, you mentioned the, the one center. Who else might you know, be You know, I, I didn't see all the numbers. Yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, I think, you know, really, it's, I think there's a, all five have an opportunity to, for seniors to have an opportunity to possibly get into camp um, just because they're a smart group, number one. Uh, and those guys that make, to make the 53-man roster, like, for instance, Nobu, why did his stock go up? It's because senior bowling played right tackle, played left tackle, played center. You know, when you're only 53-man roster, side why Marshall Newhouse over there just uh, got signed by the Bills. He's been in the system so long because he's he can move his speed, he's smart, so uh, he, he can be plugged in. He's not necessarily a starter anymore, uh, but he's a guy that he can get you he can get you through a season. And so, uh, you know, what these guys got to understand is you're trying to find wh what what can I where can I fill a role on a team. It's like Jonathan Anderson. He's been with Chicago for three years. He's never. Never made the 53-man roster, but he's ended the season on the roster with him. Three years, he's he's made a lot of money. I mean, it's, for what you promised, you got your degree, you don't have any debt coming out of college, um, and then you, you've gone three or four years and you made teams and, and you made you made great money. I mean, it's, that's the cool part of uh, watching what happens to these guys because you can change they can change their lives. So. Else for Sir, had count on how many scouts uh, showed up today from the NFL? No, I, I think every team's represented. <clears throat> Gil Brandt's here. Uh, you know, you always look at the emphasis of position coaches or general managers and all those kind of things. So it's, uh, you know, it's um, it's fun to also see that because it's Easter that some of the scouts they brought the kids because they're come in knowing that we're kind of a family group. Uh, so they know I'm not I'm not one of those people that's going to get upset because. You got your little kids running the 40s while the guys are warming up. I think that's the, I think it's the telltale sign of uh, these guys understanding they've all been around us for a long time of how we do things and how we conduct ourselves. And so, you know, it's that's again a fun part. It's just like you guys doing media. So how do we help you do your jobs? Same with the scouts. How do we help them do their jobs uh, so they can they can get a great read on whether a guy can be drafted or he can't be drafted? Like. You know, I'm sure none of you guys thought Avion Collins a year ago. Here's a guy that he makes he makes a team and he almost makes it to the Super Bowl because he's with the Vikings and, and they really like him. You know, it's, he's one of those guys I was talking about. A guy that you give a chance that has had good numbers and then when he came in, he fit a lot of different roles and then all of a sudden then he's coming back and telling our guys, uh, you know, I was one of those guys that said, I'm not sure you should be listening to Coach B and I'm telling you everything he told us was true. So, kind of like a parent, you know, the only only thing wrong that you do is if you don't tell them, right? If you don't tell them, then that's your fault. So you got to tell them whether they're listening or not. So uh, he's one of those guys. It doesn't matter if they get it now, it's whether they get it later. That's what my job is. It's my job to make sure they get it later. Coach, your, your thoughts on uh, what's happening with Trevon right now? Well, number one, I, you know, this is these guys' day. Everybody knows it's been a part of our program, what we teach. And so he... he He's been a frog, but he also understands that, you know, I have, I have a lady at home, Mrs. P, that she's probably not very happy right now, so. Talk about how, how you feel when all these guys come back that played for you, you know, like the point you have at your house, like, how do that make you feel? Well, yeah, it's obviously, you're, it's, you're, like, you're like a parent, but, you know, it's, I think what people understand is that, that, that we, we have something, you do something for four or five years as a coach and, a, and players, you have a relationship that you go through that nobody else gets a chance to go do that. Win or lose, uh, we know them as well as we know them as well, or maybe even better than what their parents know them sometimes. And so, you know, for us, uh, you know, it's a special time. And you know, the thing that, that people don't understand is they never quit being yours. You know, I just I wrote probably five rec job recommendations uh, in the last in the last 30, 45 days for guys that are not in their 20s, not in their 30s, they're in their 40s. But you're still, you're still, you're still helping. That's, you know, that's what our, that's why you stay somewhere 21 years, is, is that they still know they have somewhere to turn back to, and 
somebody that they know that can give them advice. They don't have to listen to it. The one thing about it, it's kind of like in coaching. When I was younger, as a young coach, I wanted to get in front of people in a clinic and tell them so I could show them what I know. And now I don't, if they want to listen, fine, but I don't, I'm not trying to teach anybody anything anymore. I'm just like, if you don't want to listen, I don't care. You know? so, <laughs> Coach, there's been a lot of talk about the offensive line, the skill players, but you had such a productive defense in 2017. What do you think their NFL future looks like for Trayvon well, Howard, Nick Orr? Well, you know, Nevada? I think Trayvon helped himself. You're going to keep running. Beat. He'll train and do everything as a safety because, you know, he's, he was an undersized linebacker that made a lot of plays, but he played a lot of coverage, which I think is going to help him. And then he needs to be able to show today that he can be a coverage guy because everybody knows he can bang, but he's a very uh, – he has a very high football intelligence. He and Nick Orr both, one of the reasons why we were successful is those guys were high, you know, you have a Matt Boson, which has a great motor. Uh, they're gonna consider him maybe being a little bit undersized for what they're looking for. How does he fit? Uh, but he, you know, they love guys that play hard. So that's, you know, he's gotta be able to prove to them and he can do all those kind of things. But you know, that's, Rath the Jihada can really run. Uh, he's gotta find, you know, he's gotta be able to show that he can make plays and elevate because he, he is a speed guy, you know, you know, and most of that's going to come, not going to going to happen so much here. This will give them a chance to get into camp. They got to do well, but then they, they got to play well when, like you guys know, they, they have to play well when they get into camp. Um, and you know, one of the things I think about the NFL guys really like about TC guys and why a lot of us, even our guys even make work squads is they'll do anything. They know how to work hard. They're accountable. They're not going to, as a general rule, they're not going to embarrass you uh, and do things. And so I think, uh, that's why they, they like taking them because they they're, they're, they have the glue factor. They're gonna they're gonna make your team better one way or the other, whether it's as a starter, as a backup, or a work squad guy. And the last time I looked, you get paid pretty good as a work squad guy in the NFL compared to everybody else. So, well, how do I how do we help them do that? You guys are scrimmaging today. Yeah. How many periods? Uh, we won't. We'll actually start out. Just really, we're really short we, at uh, corner right now because of sick, the sickness is going around and injury and everything. So it'll probably come down to how many snaps that the ones that are left can uh, take for us to do what we need to do. But we didn't because of uh, the same reason we didn't we didn't go Tuesday. So, so at some point in time, you run out of days to be able to practice. Coach, can you tell me how John Diars and his mentality and maturity may help him? Well, yeah, he's a strong player. Uh, John actually played outside. Number one, he's, his strength is going to help because he, he got a chance to be a good special teams player. Um, not everybody, very few people can be the number one wide receiver. But uh, where, where, like John, I think he can help himself as an inside guy, strong, strong hands, uh, knows he's very mature on how he does things. And the other thing, is, which is going to make him also a good special teams player, because he's a, he, he's a bigger, more physical player. Uh, than what a lot of a lot of wideouts are. Coach, one of the players that's actually going to be out here next year, uh, Ty Summers. He started out as a quarterback and then transitioned to linebacker here at TCU. How do you think his time at quarterback has helped him become a better linebacker on the field? Um, well, you can communicate, uh, but you know there's there's quite a bit of difference in all of that. But one of the reasons I've always liked quarterbacks and running backs because that's usually where uh, people, co coaches put their best players because he's going to touch the ball the most. And so for us, in Ty's case, you know, it's uh, the intelligence aspect of uh, playing, playing the game. Last question. How do you think Kenny Hill has performed and done for his stock today? Well, I, I don't know. I'm getting a chance. You know, he, I, I didn't see how he ran. Uh, but I think that's why John Diaz kind of got a black eye because he came out throwing with him. Kenny threw, he's throwing the ball, probably zipping the ball better right now than he's ever, he's ever thrown it. And so... Uh, you know, I'm kind of interested to watch and see how see how they all do uh, doing all that. But I, obviously, he's very athletic, and uh, you know, he's he's got a really good football IQ, and he's a competitor. So, uh, coaches coaches like that.